So the first thing I'm going to do is add a new layer. And I'll call this one wing center. Now you may notice that the um, that all the other layers here have an eight times or nine times. They're pretty high resolution, and that's because of the scene scale that I'm working with. So because of the scale that this ship is supposed to be in the final application it's going to, which is Unity, um, I needed to model it in 3D code at a certain scale. Unfortunately, that means that if I were to add in some volume right now, if I were to just load up my primitives tool and hit enter, you'll see that it's a very low density object, which I'm not going to be able to do a whole lot with. So I will need to increase the resolution. Now the increased resolution is down here at the very bottom of the sculpt room, res plus. I've bound it to shift R for resolution. So I'll hit shift R a couple times. And now I can add in volume that's dense enough that I can work with it. Okay, very first thing is I need to, if I look at my reference, which I can probably move over a little bit. Very good. Now, you see, you see this whole shape right here. So I need this primitive, this box, to encompass that entire shape. So I'll scale it out until I get to just about the ends there, and then also ends on the other side. I'll hit the 4 key to look at it from the uh, side view. And I don't need to be quite that thick, so I will want to be about the same thickness as the fuselage coupling we have here in the background, so make it about a little bit thicker than that probably. There we go. Thicker specifically than the narrower end of it. And I'll hit enter. Oops. Symmetry is turned on. I don't want it turned on just yet. Hit S and I'll just disable symmetry. Okay, so now we have our starting volume. So we're going to be cutting away from this in order to get our final shape. So the very first thing is I can cut away from the top of it. So I'll grab my cutoff tool, make sure that my stroke mode is the polygon, and I'll just start uh, cutting away. It's not going to line up with the reference image exactly, but as long as it's close enough, we'll get the idea. Move my primary weapon mount a little bit more towards the center here. Going back to wing center. Now it should angle off towards the front and around the sides a little bit. So I'm going to look at it from the side. And I will cut off that way as well. And I'll probably cut it off a little bit longer towards the bottom. We have no idea exactly what the bottom should look like, but in the final application this is going to, you won't be seeing the bottom very much, so we don't need to spend a lot of time on it. And then, this is where it's going to get a little tricky, because then what I have to do is I need to, let me hide that, I need to cut it off at this angle. So this is going to be a little tricky. There we go. 
see that nice angle looks very much like our reference image now. So let me just do the same thing to the other side real quick. And now I don't, we're not going to be seeing the back part because we're going to cover it with another uh, volume, but uh, we don't want it sticking out here where unless it needs to. So I'm also going to cut that area off. Now looking at this size-wise, I think I can probably make it a little bit narrower in terms of width. So I'm going to do another little trick with the Pose tool. So looking at it from the top, if I grab my Pose tool, once again I need to hit Edit Pose Fall Off to make sure that it's linear. Even though it was linear last time, at least in my version of 3D Code, it seems to default to an S-curve if you don't check it. So. I'm just checking it periodically. Uh, by the way, I'm using version 4.5 of 3D Coat. I know that version 4.7 has been released. I haven't uh, downloaded it yet, but most of these, um, all of these techniques that I'm showing you will still be applicable. So with my pose tool, I'm just going to grab up again making sure that my red line is as straight as possible and then what I can do is I can if I use the linear fall off I can move it oh no okay so you see what's happening there you see how it's a little how we're getting this sort of black outline for whatever reason this may be a bug with my version of 3d coat or with the uh, software entirely I'm not entirely sure what it is but um, actually, let me show you exactly what I'm not sure if you guys can see it on the video, but there's a very thin black line here. And the reason that's happening is because this particular part of the volume down here is below the center grid. So because of that, the pose tool actually won't capture it. So to fix that, I just need to move it up. So everything's above that line and then I can use my pose tool again. So with it, oh, got to check that. You see how the uh, the shading is different. That's one way you can tell if uh, if it's using the correct fall off. So if I have a linear uh, fall off like that, I can just move this and and it'll be very similar to scaling it. Now one thing you may be wondering is why would I use the pose tool to do this when I could very easily just scale it using the transform tool. And the reason for that is that pay attention right down here where, um, where it says uniform. If I scale it in just one axis like that it becomes non-uniform and that can be very bad if you plan on sculpting on it later. Allow me to show you. So if I grab my extrude tool, let me um, let me hide the, uh, the reference plane right now so it's a bit easier to see. So if I grab the extrude tool and I just start drawing, it draws in a very predictable fashion, you know. the the brush is the same width as my cursor. Now if I scale this so it's non-uniform and then I try to brush on it, let me just click once, you see what's happening there? Even though my cursor is circular, the resulting brush is an ellipsoid. So to avoid that, I try not to scale my objects non-uniformly. All right, let me bring the reference plane back. And now that we've done the pose tool on it, we can move this chunk back into position. 